Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. In this video, I'm going to show you that how you can cache your images in Swift UI. So when you are scrolling through a list, you're not downloading or re-downloading the same images again and again. So our first task is to display the images. Now you can go to any website to get the images. I'm going to go and use the JSON placeholder slash photos which gives me the title, the URL, as well as the thumbnail URL, which we'll be using to display the images. So our first task is just to display the images on the screen. For this, we will have to create our service and also some sort of a model that can hold this data. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new file. Let's call it photo. And the whole point of adding the photo file is so that we can create a struct which can be decodable. And we can have many different things in the struct. I mean, we can have a title. If you want to display the title, we perhaps will display the title. And we will have also a thumbnail URL, which is a string. And you can see that the actual wording or the name of these properties is exactly the same as we are getting it from the actual web service. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is to implement a networking layer. I'm going to go ahead and call this web service. You can call it anything you want, that's perfectly fine. I'm going to go ahead and create a class called web service. And now we are going to create a function. So I'm just going to go ahead and call this function get photos, async throws. I'm going to use the async await feature, but you can use callback if you want to. And now I can go ahead and say URL session dot shared dot data and passing in the actual URL. So I'm going to pass in the URL. And now we need to get the URL. So we can just copy the URL from here. There we go. And I can forcefully unwrap it. I know it's not going to fail anyways. So there we go. So we have created a URL session data. We will call it with try await. And we will get the data. Uh, so it's going to be a tuple. So it's going to be data and a response. We don't really care that much about the response. So we're just going to ignore it. All right. I can see that right now we're not really returning anything and we must return an array of photos. So let's go ahead and do that. JSON decoder dot decode an array of photo dot self photo dot self the data and we will simply go ahead and call it with try and return it. And let's go ahead and build our application. So that should be it. That is going to return us the photos. That's perfectly fine. Now, if you want to get the photos, and if you're following the MVVM design pattern, then it might be a good idea to add some sort of a view model. So I'm just going to go ahead and call photo list view model. And let's go ahead and create the class called photo list view model observable object and in the photo list view model we are going to implement the populate photos function populate photos this will be an async function and we will call the web service the web service dot get photos Try await. We cannot really use try like this, so we will have to wrap it around with do so that we can catch exceptions if there are any exceptions. So we're just going to do that like this. Now, this is going to return us the model of photos, which will be of type this one, the photo. And what we should do is we should construct some sort of a view model that we can represent and send it on the UI. So in the same file or a different file, you can create a photo view model, which is going to represent a individual photo and the maybe the title attached to this photo as well. 
we are going to get a DTO object or the model object photo, which is of type photo. We will go ahead and pass it when we are creating this photo. Self dot photo equals to photo. And now we can go ahead and create some properties that will return us a title as well as the thumbnail URL. One thing to note over here is that the thumbnail URL we're not returning as a string, we are returning it as a URL. I also want to make sure that we can display all of these different objects of photo on the screen. So we are using identifiable so we can loop through them. Finally, going back to the photos or populate photos function, we can go ahead and create another property called photos which will hold an array of photo view model and finally we can assign all of these different photos which are models to photos which are photo view model so i can simply go over here and say photos dot map and it will be photo view model dot init so basically what we're doing over here is that we are going through this photos, which is an array of photo, not photo view model, but photo. And we are constructing a new photo view model. So every time this loop is going to run or the map is going to run, it's going to produce photos. And eventually it's going to be an array of photo view model, which are going to be assigned to photos. I'm also going to decorate this with the main actor so that we know that these functions are actually called on the main thread and the property photos is actually set on the main thread. All right. Okay, now the other thing that we need to do is we need to display the photos on the screen. So let's go ahead and jump into our content view. First, we will create an instance of photo list view model. That's perfectly fine. Next up, we are going to go ahead and use a navigation view, although you don't really need a navigation view. I'm just going to add a navigation view. And inside that, we can go ahead and say photo list view model dot photos. We don't really have to provide an ID because photo view model already conforms to identifiable. We will get a photo. And now we can go ahead and display Let's go ahead and at least display the text associated or the title associated with the photo and give it some sort of a navigation title also. So we will simply say photos. Now keep in mind that we still haven't fired our main function, which is populate photos. So I'm just going to go ahead and say over here photo list view model dot populate photos. Let's go ahead and run it and see if we can display the title. So that's good. The title is getting displayed. But what about the actual photos? Well, we can use an async image, which is already built into Swift or the newer version of Swift at least. And we can pass in the URL. Just by doing that, we can display all the different images. Now, to the naked eye, it looks perfectly fine. I mean, we are able to display the images. But these images are not really cached. This actually means that when you run the app, let, let me go ahead and run it again. If I scroll up, all the images are downloaded. And if I scroll up again, all the images are downloading again. So we don't really want that to happen. All right. Once we have downloaded the image, why are we re downloading it again? An async image, which is the new view that is provided. Uh, it does not really accommodate that. It does not cache the images. So we can't really use async image because it's not really performing any sort of caching. And if you want to see this in action, let me go ahead. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and plug in my actual physical phone. All right. So that we will be able to see what is going on. So let me go ahead and run QuickTime player for you. Okay, so that's my actual physical phone now in front of you. And what I want to show you is what happens when we profile our app. So I'm going to go change this to the actual phone, iPhone SE. 
Yeah, I'm still old school using the phone with the start button. And I'm going to go to product and I'm just going to say profile. This will hopefully launch the app in my phone and we should be able to see what is going on. Now, it might give me a template menu first. Uh, we're waiting for that. Let's see when that comes up. Hopefully it will. Okay, here we go. And from this, we are going to select network because we want to profile the networking. And there we go. Okay, so it is now prof profiling. Uh, I think we still have to run it. So let me go ahead and click on this button. This is fine. Okay, so now it is already starting to profile. So you can see on the left side, we have the profiler and on the right side, we have the actual app. Now, now check over here. This is the one that we should be looking at, the HTTP traffic. If I am scrolling, 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 see that? See that what's going on? Right there, oh, wow. I mean, that's a lot of stuff going on. You can see all these bars being created right over here. This is actually the uh, images request going and downloading the images. We can always select this, like just by selecting it. And going over here, you can always see what images are being downloaded. So you can see a lot of different images are being downloaded. Wow, right? So nothing is being cached. If I scroll a little bit more to the down, going downwards, you can again see that it is downloading right there. All right. And what I want to do, I'm not sure how to unselect this. It's kind of like a weird interface. If I go up again, you will be able to see, wow, look at that. Look at that. If I'm simply going up, meaning scrolling up to the same images that I've already downloaded, but you can already see that this is happening right there. That's not good. This means that we already downloaded these images. Since I was scrolling up, uh, it again downloaded the images. So if I scroll down again, it will download again. I mean, so basically none of the images is being cached. Every time the cell position is visible on the phone, it will download these images again and again and again and again. So that is the problem that we're trying to solve is that if you have already downloaded the images, why are we downloading it again? So let's go ahead and see that how we can accommodate that by using a caching mechanism. Now in order to use caching, we can't really use async image. So we have to comment this out. We're going to create our own image, our own control that will download or display the images. But before we do that, we will have to implement the image loader. We're going to create image loader whose responsibility will be to download an image. The view that we're going to create, URL image, that functionality would be to go ahead and actually display the image. Okay, so let's go ahead and import UI kit. I'm going to also create a network error class because we may have some network issues, like a bad request. We may have like unsupported image. Maybe you're downloading something and it's not really supported. And we can also have bad URL. Maybe you're passing in the URL that is just bad. Next, we're going to create the image loader, which will be observable object. Now, in the image loader, we will perform the actual fetch. So we will create a function called fetch image. You can pass in a URL. And it will be async, and it can throw an exception. So over here, we will check for a couple of different things. If the URL is good or not. So we will unwrap it and we're going to check. If it cannot be unwrapped, then well, uh, network error, bad URL. Sorry, can't do anything. Next up, we are going to go ahead and create a request. URL request and pass in the URL. Hopefully the URL would be fine in this case. We're not caching. We're not doing anything with the cache. 
Next up, we're going to download the image. So let's go ahead and do that. No caching, no nothing. We're just trying to see if our image loader is going to even work or not. After that, we're going to get to caching. Next up, we're going to check for the actual response. Okay, so if the response is good, everything is fine. If it's not, then bad request. And finally, we are going to go ahead and create an image using the UI image and passing in the data. If this is not good, then again, we can throw an exception saying network error dot unsupported image. Now we have the image, but we have to assign the image to something. So for that, we're going to go ahead and create a new property to the image loader, which is called published. And eventually, we are simply going to assign this property, UI image, to the image. Now, this property, which is marked with publish, needs to be assigned on the UI thread, on the main thread. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark this with main actor. OK. Let's go ahead and build it. So this is our image loader. This has nothing to do with caching. It's actually not even doing caching. But we were trying to see if we can use our image loader to display an image or not. Now we will construct our view that will be responsible for displaying an image. And we will call it URL image. Now URL image will be a view. So let's go ahead and import surf UI. Probably should have used the view template, URL image, which is a view. And it will have a couple of different functions. I think one of the, them that's required is body. Okay. And let's just call it over here URL image for now. Eventually it needs to display the actual image. Okay. So in order to get the image, somebody needs to pass in the URL. This means that they will pass in to the actual uh, constructor over here. I mean, it will automatically create the constructor. I guess you can use that. That's perfectly fine. Uh, we can leave it for now because there is a default constructor that you can just use since it's a struct and a let property. Uh, the other thing that we need to create is the state object, which it will be of image loader. Let's go ahead and initialize our image loader. There we go. All right. OK, the next thing is the function to actually download the image. We will call it download image. Async. We are going to perform a try await on the image loader, image loader right there, dot fetch image with a URL, which is URL. If there is a problem, then we can go ahead and display the error. Now we still need to call the download image. So let's go to the body part, this one. And we are going to put a V stack. Now there are many different ways of doing that, but I'm just going to use the simplest approach that we are going to check for the UI image. If it is available, then we can go ahead and construct the image using the UI image. And that is perfectly fine. Else we can show a progress view or something if it is not loaded at that point, which it's saying loading. And we still need to implement or call the task. So now we can go ahead and call download image. So this will be our URL image view. Let's go ahead and start using it. It's not caching or doing anything. So URL image passing in the URL. So that part remains kind of like the same. We followed the same kind of structure with the async image. Let me go ahead and run this right now. And we'll see that if we can even display the images or not, if, if this is even working or not. Okay, so this is working as expected. I mean, it doesn't really look any different, right? And if I run it on the profiler, you will see that it is also not caching anything. All these images are being downloaded again and again. So now it is our job to cache these images.
So inside the image loader, which is responsible for downloading the images, we are going to create a private property. We will call it static let cache. And there are many different kinds of cache. There is a URL cache. There is a cache also, which is NS cache. We're just going to use the NS cache. And NS cache caches stuff in the memory. And this is kind of like a very old API. So that's why we have to use the NS string and the, as a key. Uh, and then the actual uh, class type, which we will be storing. So all of these things, the key and the value has to be in the classes and not structs. Let's go ahead and build it. One thing to make sure is that the cache is a static property and not instance or an, not a regular uh, property or uh, instance variable. Because if it's instant, then it will be initialized again and again, and you're, you're not really caching anything at that point. All right, so now the first thing we do, now we have created the cache, is to check in the cache. Maybe that image that you're trying to download is already in the cache. So if let cached image equals to self with a capital S dot capital S because we're targeting the static property dot cache for key dot object cache dot object for key. What will be the key? Well, the key is actually the URL. That is the key. So we're going to take the absolute URL as an S string because it doesn't work with the string. It's an old API. So if it is available, then go ahead and just get the cache image, get it out of the cache and assign it to the image and we are done. Else, well, else that means that the image is actually not in the cache. So that is going to require a bit of work. So else part is we are going to put all of this. We have to download the image. We have to do the response. We have to get the image. And now we can go ahead and store it in the cache. So self.cache.set object. And we can pass in the actual thing that we want to put in the cache, which is image. And for key, which again, it will be the url.absolute string as ns string. All right. And with those changes in place, let's go ahead and run our application on an actual device and try to see that if we are downloading images again or not. So let's see if we can pull up this. Okay, that's the device. Yeah, that's it. And what we are going to do is we are going to profile it. So let's go ahead and click on the profile. And let's see if that works. There we go. And we're going to profile it again. Okay, there we go. It's launching. So immediately you can see that it displays the images. That's fine. I'm just going to go ahead and scroll. When I scroll, it should be able to download the images. So we should see some network traffic. Here we go. You can see the network traffic going on a little bit crazy over here as we are scrolling. Okay. Now I'm not scrolling, so it's not really downloading any images. But what about if I scroll up? Keeping in mind that most of these images are already downloaded. And you can see that this bar is now cleared. Right. So these images are already downloaded. So there is nothing going on. Let's go ahead and scroll a little bit further. If I go scroll a little bit further, I will come across a lot of images that have never been downloaded. And again, you can see this going on. So this is basically telling you that the images are being downloaded and there is a HTTP traffic going on. But all of these images are now we are going to put into our cache. Eventually, if, uh, if we need, then it will run out of the memory uh, and it will start evicting those things. But you can see, that even though if I'm scrolling right over here, it's not really downloading these images or re-downloading these images. So already your application is now super fast because you're not re-downloading those images uh, that have already been downloaded previously. And you're putting it in the memory. You're not putting it right now in some sort of a persistent state. That is where you can use the uh, URL cache instead of the NS cache. All right. So there we go. It's not that hard to implement caching. Uh, we just implemented in a few lines of code. Now this NS cache does have a lot of other options like number of items and the cost and all of those things, which we can look into 
in the future, or you can definitely go and read the documentation. But just to have a very basic version of caching, you can definitely start using this approach. So this is it. Thank you so much. And I really hope that you like the tutorial. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my Udemy courses. I have a lot of different Udemy courses on iOS development. You can see Mastering Rx Swift. I have Testament Development, MVVM Design Pattern, Core Data, and Async Innovate, and a lot of courses which target Swift UI. So definitely check out these courses. Thank you so much, and I really hope that you have enjoyed this video.